Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Scooter Roth, and welcome to another episode of The Messy Desk. Uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what's been going on with us the event photographers. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about uh, what's going on with COVID-19, the coronavirus, the shutdown that's going on. Uh, every day, it seems like a new state implements a total shutdown. <laughs> So it's uh, unfortunately very difficult times for all of us photographers, um, especially event photographers. Now, depending on the kind of event photography you do, uh, is going to affect you know whether you're dealing with a lot of postponements or cancellations. So with that, there were four aspects to contracts that I wanted to talk about uh, in relation to you know what we're going through with uh, clients. Um, and this is the approach that I'm taking as far as you know what's on my contract and the approach that I think that you guys should be taking. It's so before we go into this, because it's dealing with contract and stuff like that, I did want to point out the fact that I am not an attorney. I'm an event photographer. These are just some of the approaches that I'm taking, uh, and you can take them as you see fit. Uh, because of the fact that, you know, you're dealing with legal terms. Uh, so this is not legal advice. This is just some legal information. Uh, how these situations apply to you could vary. Uh, and we're going to go a little bit into, you know, why they might vary. The first thing that you probably heard more in the past couple weeks than you probably ever heard in your, your entire life is the term called a force majeure. So a force majeure is a clause uh, that you put into a contract to pretend protects both you as the photographer or service provider and it protects the client you know a lot of photographers seem to think that just because they have a force majeure uh, clause that they just automatically have to refund the client and that's not always necessarily the case and we're going to go a little bit more into that in a minute um, but generally, the, that's what a force majeure clause is. It's just basically something that you put in a contract um, in the event of cancellations that are outside of either yours or the client's control. A force majeure clause keeps you from penalizing uh, the client for this type of situation and vice versa. They can't really penalize you as well. So it's an equal protection in that way. So that's what a force majeure clause is. Uh, it's, I don't know, a foreign word. I don't know. Uh, but it basically means, you know, any kind of forces of nature, you know, acts of God, even though, you know, God is a religious term. So it's it's uh, one of the reasons why you wouldn't want to put in a contract what's an act of God. Um you know, things like that, you know, when a family matters, you know, a relative that got sick and is in the hospital, things like that, you know, may on an emotional level want to seem like an act of God, but from a political, not a political, from a legal landscape, it may not be considered an act of God. So uh, th those are things to think about. So that's the general understanding of a force majeure clause is. Um, and because of what's going on right now, dealing with the fact that a lot of states are on, in shutdown, businesses are being forced to not open, uh, private events such as, you know, p guests of over 50 people, 200 people, all those kind of things like weddings and events that we are in are not allowed to be taking place. So because of that is, is as of right now, a force majeure event. With that being said, uh, as far as if you are dealing with a lot of postponements and cancellations, um, do you have to refund the client? So let's get a little bit more into that. Now, depending on the kind of photography that you are, you know, is going to factor in uh, what's going to be taking place. You know, uh, I do a lot of bar bar mitzvahs, a lot of private events like that. So I'm dealing 99% with just postponements. Which is great because, you know, I mean, it, it's not great in, in uh, the fact of having to, you know, postpone an event. It's not a great situation to be in. But it's a lot better than dealing with a whole bunch of canceled events where mm -hmm. a, the contract terms then probably would be coming about and uh, legal aspects like that. Uh, if you're dealing with weddings, you know, weddings you have to deal with a lot of a clientele not clientele, uh, weddings have a large, large guest count that are based on, you know, uh, families having to get maybe babysitters for their kids in order for them to attend a wedding. So there might be more uh, travel from outside of states, you know, adult couples from, you know, your college friends that may be uh, in another state, stuff like that. There's a lot more travel from uh, friends and relatives uh, to get to a wedding as opposed to a bar or mitzvah where a large uh, percentage of the guests at a bar my mitzvah there might be some immediate family that are traveling but a lot of them are just school friends um and friends that the the kid has from the neighborhood so it's not as much of an inconvenience for a bar by mitzvah to postpone as it would be for a wedding 
um, uh, corporate events are probably dealing with cancelizations, uh, especially because a lot of the fact that corporate events are based around, um, you know, corporate activity, you know, things like a March Madness themed event, a team building event that's based around the Olympics or an award ceremony or certain things like that. So if you're in corporate event photography, there's a good chance that the events that you were hired for are canceled, not just postponed. So that in that area, um, you know, it's unfortunate. And of course, if you're a sports photographer, you know, with all the sports going on that's canceled, uh, there is no postponement that, you know, they're going to just redo this season, you know. So because of that, sports photographers are getting canceled now. Those are a whole different world of contracts. I know nothing about sports photography contracts. So this stuff may or may not apply to you. But with that being said, as far as whether you have to refund the client, a lot of that is going to be based on the terminology that you're using. So that terminology comes down to whether or not you're using the word retainer or deposit. Uh, I use retainer because I want my clients to understand that the moment that they hire me, the moment that they sign on that down the line in the contract, they are retaining my services. And that service exists all the way till they get the last uh, product or service that's within the contract. So that, that's, good. that's a span of uh, you know, eight, ten months to more than a year, if not more. So it's not just the five or six hours of the event that I'm doing. There's a lot more involved. I'm researching the client, the, the researching the venue, uh, checking other photographers' approaches to the venue, what kind of lighting I needed. Um, if I need specific equipment that I don't have, I'm scheduling rentals for that. I'm putting deposits down on those rentals. That's where deposits do apply. Uh, so, so there's a lot more involved that goes into the process in order to provide that service. Much like when you retain a lawyer, you know, you're retaining a lawyer for a specific court date, but the lawyer is doing a lot of research on your behalf to uh, represent you the best in court. And if the court gets postponed, then it gets postponed. If the court date gets canceled um, and your case is dismissed, you still have to hire that attorney because they did a lot of research on your behalf. So photography in a lot of ways is very similar to that. Um, you know, so I want to make sure the clients understand that I'm not a product that they're just renting for a few hours. I'm providing an ongoing service for them. So that's why I use the word retainer. If you use the word deposit, deposits generally go towards specific things that uh, if those deals fall through or um, you'd end up not needing that product, you would then have to refund the client. So people that might provide photo booths and the, or popcorn machines or those type of aspects that are within the event world, uh, those specific things may you may be required to have to refund if you're using the word deposit. If you put a deposit down, let's say, for a popcorn machine, and now that event gets canceled so you don't need that popcorn machine, that deposit may be legally have to be refunded to you. So that's uh, some of the aspects uh, that are revolve around even photography is whether you're using the word retainer versus deposit. And I strongly encourage uh, photographers like yourself to use the word retainer. But that's, that's not um, legal advice. That's just legal information. That's what I use and I recommend uh, other people to do it. Uh, so with that be being said, what happens is that generally whenever you're dealing with a canceled event, like a wedding or something like that, and it's a family matter or, you know, they have a change of heart, maybe they found another photographer, so they decide to let you know. So they send you an email saying it's unfortunate, but I have to cancel my event. A client at that point goes into something called anticipatory breach. So that's the third thing that I wanted to talk about. When a client goes into anticipatory breach, they're now telling you ahead of time that they anticipate having to breach their contract. Because usually, you know, a client's like a wedding or a missile client or something like that, their general responsibility is providing a venue for and having an event. Uh, even though the event may have be happening on a specific date, um, that's not a requirement uh, usually within the contract. The contract is just for them to have an event, not on, on an event, and the event just so happens to be on a specific date. Um, so that can get a little bit tricky as far as legalese and interpretation. You know, a lot of contract law is about interpretation. It's not necessarily that either one side or the other is breaking a law. It's about interpretations. Um, so you're bound to terms in the contract. You're also bound towards prior um, litigation and lawsuits and what happened there. So, and you're also very open to a judge's interpretation of what's going on. So because of that, um, 
and I lost my train of thought. But anyway, uh, because of that, clients, when they sit back and tell you that they have to cancel the event, they're technically in an anticipatory breach. And when that happens, you now as the photographer or service provider are no longer obligated to deliver your end of the service. Not only that, but you can also go after the client for the full balance that would have been happened if they didn't breach a contract. So that's the difference between a, a situation of anticipatory breach versus a force majeure event, where if they're canceling because of something that's out of their control, Control, um, it wouldn't necessarily be legally allowed to go after them for the full payment um, because going for them for the full payment would be as if they didn't breach a contract and then a force majeure situation they're not breaching the contract they're not breaching the contract they're allowed to get out of the contract because of something that has nothing to do with them uh, so that's where the anticipatory breach uh, pertains to as far as uh, the force majeure and, you know, getting refunded and all that kind of stuff. So in an anticipatory breach, you could sue the client to get full payment. You know, if they decide to just hire another photographer, you know, you could sue them for the full payment. Uh, but with that being said, there is a fourth aspect and the fourth topic that I want to talk about, which is called mitigating your damages. Uh, the best example for people that are not involved in photography or event photography like this, uh, the best way to understand that is let's say that you are renting a place. So, for instance, this studio I rent uh, on a uh, yearly basis. So I have a yearly contract. And so what happens is let's say is you know within six months I decide that I don't need this office anymore. Well, I'm on the hook now for the remainder of that uh, lease. You know, if it's a one-year lease term and I need to move six months in and change my office location or relocate, then that remaining six months I'm obligated to cover for, you know. And that's where the uh, mitigating damages comes into it. So, And it's as the same thing as before with the answers of a breach. You know, when I sit back and I tell my landlord that I have to move, I'm telling him that I'm going to be breaching the contract. And then Therefore, he can legally hold me accountable for that remaining six months due. But when it comes to mitigating damages, he's not able to just sit back and go, well, you still have to pay me rent, so that's it. He's not allowed to do that. He has to advertise the property. He has to make sure that you know other people are, are aware of the fact that this office is now available. Um, so he has to mitigate those damages and kind of like limit put a limit on his losses, you know, kind of, he knows he's in a situation where he's facing, could be facing a loss, he has to minimize those losses. So because of that, you know, he has to mitigate his damages. We as photographers have to do the same thing as service providers. You know, as right now you hear like a lot of venues want to charge their client for, you know, if they reschedule a date for, you know, something that's more than a year out or after 2020, maybe in 2021, they want to charge their client a rescheduling fee. And that's a little bit tricky. I'm not sure whether, you know, that's a good move or not. Uh, from a legal standpoint, they may because, again, uh, when you're dealing with a forced majority event, you know, when the venue is, you know, forced to close, they can't have the event. The client shouldn't be held accountable for that. But the venue offers, let's say, a rescheduled date of November, December within this year. If the client turns that down and says, no, we don't want to do it this year. We want to push it off to next year. Now that's not a force majeure uh, situation. You know, the, the venue's offering to reschedule within this year. And if the client turns that down, once the client turns that down, it's no longer a force majeure situation. Now the client is opting to choose to do their event in 2021. And because of that, there may be allowed to be charged a rescheduling fee. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. That's a very situation that could be come down to interpretation and past situations. You know, again, because clients, when, especially when you're dealing with what's going on right now where there is no specific end date, you know, we might be under two, three, four, five months of lockdown and not being allowed to have events. They may, you know, trim that back where they may allow events of 50 people and then maybe eventually they'll allow events of 100 people. You, we just don't know. There's no specific end date. And because of that, for a client to turn around and say, well, we're not, we're uncomfortable doing an event in 2020 just to have to cancel or reschedule again, they may want to push till 2021. So under this situation, I would side with the client versus the venue. So that's some tricky areas there. <laughs> you know, the, you know, the photographer for me is uncomfortable with that. I understand the, you know, the legal argument that venues are making. Uh, so again, it's all open to interpretation, but those are four aspects to uh, contracts that 
that I think as a photographer you should be aware of. I'm sure your lawyers are hopefully aware of these terms. Uh, they may not know exactly how they apply to your situation. So that's something that you can guys can mutually discuss. Uh, but anyway, so that's the force majeure clause. That's uh, using the word retainer instead of deposit. That's a change I think you should do. You know, because again, deposits apply towards specific things. You know, whether it's, you know, like a popper is a specific thing that you rent for a specific time frame. Uh, it's not like photography. There's a certain research. Um, a lot of research and stuff like that involved. Um, the third one is anticipatory breach and the difference between an anticipatory breach of contract versus what's going on right now with cancelization. And the last thing, is, of course, is having to mitigate your damages. You know, So again, if you're a photographer and you want to hold on to your retainer, which you may legally be allowed to, you still have to mitigate your damages. You still have to make an effort to refill that date. So when clients want to get refunded for their deposits or their retainers, you know, I let them know that um, it's a non-refundable retainer. I'm putting a value on the work that I did up until the day that they told me that they had to cancel or postpone or anything like that. I'm putting a value on all that work that I've been doing. Even work like this has a value to it. So the retainers cover that. But with that being said, because it's a force majeure event, uh, the event would be looked at as if it's canceled. And therefore, everything dealing with that event would then automatically have to be refunded. But... There's a value to the work that I put in. Some clients had pre-shoots. I've already put a pre-shoot in. I've done editing for that. So there's work that was put in. The retainer covers that value, but there might be some negotiation. I may have to mitigate the damages regarding that retainer. So that's if it came to a lawsuit where the client wants to sue me to get their retainer back. Um, that's what I would anticipate happening is we would have to negotiate back and forth to see, you know, what's the real value of the work that I did. Um, and did I make any efforts to kind of get some of that value back in other ways? You know, right now you can't, it's tough to really mitigate your damages when there is no, you're not allowed to have any other events. You can't just call up another client and say, Hey, I'm available for that date. Now you want to book, you know, we don't know when we're allowed to start taking events again. So that's the hardest part about mitigating your damages right now is you can't really Really just turn around and find another client to rebook that date, especially if that event was is a month away. So uh, I know this is a little bit of a long video. I hope you got some value out of it. Uh, anyway, my name is Scooter Roth. Make sure to click subscribe, and I will see you hopefully soon. Uh, take care and wash your hands.